we are going to cover poor man's inlay. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We want to talk a little bit about what poor man's inlay is. Well, it's something that's really unique to the Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania area. And it was done in the 18th century and it uses sulfur. So before we jump into actually doing it, we're going to take a look at a couple of historical examples and give you a little bit of the background on it. So let's take a look. Sulfur inlay was a phenomenon that was highly localized in the Lancaster, Pennsylvania area. We find sulfur inlay in pieces dating to a very specific time frame, from 1765 to 1820. No one really knows why the German settlers used sulfur for inlay, as there are no historical or cultural precedents for it. To date, no known pieces of European descent have sulfur inlay. It's called poor man's inlay because the skills, tools, and materials needed to create it are neither complex nor expensive. Sulfur inlay is often confused with being wax or white lead, but it is not. The process is simple. With a knife or carving tool, you create a channel in the desired design, heat the sulfur until it melts, being careful not to get it over 300 degrees because the vapors may flash, and pour the liquid into the channel. Historically, they heated the sulfur by putting it into earthen jars that were then heated by partially burying them in hot sand. The indirect heat would melt the sulfur but not cause the vapors to burst into flames. The jars would help keep the quick cooling element liquid for the pour. As the liquid cools, air bubbles form. The best known and highest quality example of a piece with sulfur inlay is the Huber Schrank, which is on exhibit at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. All right, time to get started on this. This is a really simple inlay technique. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sketch out a design. I mean, you saw, you know, the designs were fairly simple on this. Um, if you take a look at a piece at the Philadelphia Art Museum called the Huber Koss, just wicked cool stuff. Got a lot of really intricate designs for this stuff. I'm starting to boil away my sulfur here. So I want to turn that down a little. It smells pretty good. So I'm just going to sketch out real fast. Oops. Since it's Lancaster County, I'm going to do just a simple tulip. And the idea is I might have to go back and modify this to make it a little bit more symmetrical. If you want to make up a pattern to do this on your piece, that's fine too. Get rid of that broken off point there. So you can see I've got a really simple tulip drawn in there and I really only need one or two tools. I'm using, these are both uh, number 15 sweep V parting tools. Uh, the feel variety, they're about a 60 degree angle. I've got a three millimeter and about a six millimeter. So for the most part, uh, I'm gonna go in and start to rough out with the six millimeter and then go back and clean up the walls of my, uh, my cutout with the little three millimeter. The idea here is I don't necessarily want a V. I wanna try and get as close to a U-shaped channel as I can. I want those side walls to be relatively straight up and down. If you can't go straight up and down, you'd rather have them undercut. The reason we use sulfur for this, and the reason that they did in the 18th century, was because sulfur is one of the few elements that actually expands when it cools. So if you have a V like this, you pour it in there, it's gonna expand and it's actually gonna pop out of the channel. So you wanna try and make sure you have nice straight sides, or if anything, you want them undercut a little bit so that when it expands, it locks this stuff in there. And I've got the sulfur on. I've just got a cheap little hot plate here. And, I, you know, I picked up a Teflon line frying pan at the dollar store or something like that. My sulfur is just a powdered variety. 
I mean, you can, if you Google sulfur and where to buy it, sooner or later you're gonna find somebody, it sometimes comes in chip form, sometimes in a powder form, doesn't matter. It's an element, it's one of the most plentiful elements in the universe. You pour that, just drop that powder right into the frying pan and turn on the heat and bring it up to melt. Sulfur melts at around 239 degrees and if you just melt it, it doesn't smell so bad. It's when you burn it that it really smells like rotten eggs. The problem is, like I said, it melts at 239 and it sort of burns right around 240, 241. So there's not much room for error there. So you're probably gonna wanna do this in a very well ventilated area because chances are you're gonna scorch it and it's gonna smell bad. I'm just gonna take my V parting tool. In fact, I'm just gonna start with the small one because I'm not gonna really go too terribly deep on this. And I just want to bring it up. And at the moment, I've got my V parting tool perfectly lined up so that I'm cutting evenly on both sides. So if you look at the bigger one, it's just laying perfectly straight up and down. It's even. I'm cutting a dead on V. That's going to change in just a couple of seconds here. So I've got that lined out. I'm going to come back over and hit this lobe here. And this one here. And I'm not too worried about them being perfectly symmetrical. Like I said, most of the original stuff, this was done by people that had, ne didn't necessarily have a whole lot of formal training. I'm starting to slide around there a little. That ought to take care of it. All right. So we come back around this way. And we've got the design pretty well laid out now. And what I want to do now is I want to take those carving tools and I'm going to turn them depending on which side of this channel I'm working on. I'm going to roll this over so that my V parting tool is kicked that way and that way I can get to the outside and then I'll kick it back the other way and get to that inside edge of my line. So let's just give it a try. And again, you got to think in terms of grain direction here. Kind of hard for me to do this from one side. Normally I move things around, but that would just make it more difficult for you to see. I'm sure it's difficult enough. And the act of rolling that thing over to try and straighten out that sidewall is why I use that little three millimeter one. So that way the opposite leg of my V parting tool isn't really digging into the opposite wall of my cut, you know, my channel. And you can make these things wider. I mean, as you saw in the, the historical examples there. You know, that one Lancaster Koss had some pretty wide lines of sulfur inlaid in it. So you can make these things wider or narrower, anything you choose, really. You can do all kinds of designs. You can get really fancy and really elaborate with it, or you can just keep it simple and folk arty like I'm doing right here. What I'd like to see is some of you guys out there that are uh, sort of into that contemporary furniture trying to figure out a, a really cool way to incorporate this into something contemporary or something arts and crafts. It would be kind of neat, something a little different. And it's really easy to do, as you can see. I'm just cleaning up that channel a little bit and we're almost ready to give this a pour.
All right. One more little stroke there. Should just about have it. All right. Now, I turned it down a little bit much. It's starting to gel up there on me. In the, I mean, you can see, started to cool off and solidify again. The great thing about the sulfur is it, uh, you use it, you can reuse it. You know, when we pour this on here, we're going to get a lot of extra. So we're going to scrape and chisel that off and we're going to put it right back in the frying pan and melt it up again. So you don't have to, I mean, a one pound bag has lasted me probably about 15 years, maybe 18. So don't, don't go out and buy 50 pounds of this stuff because it's more than 10 of you will use in a lifetime unless you're going to do an awful lot of sulfur inlay. In which case, you're not invited to come visit the shop because you're just going to smell really bad. All right, sulfur liquefied again, I mean, as you can see, and it's really easy to do this. We just take and pour it right around there into the channel. I'm going to back that heat off some so we don't really stink the place up. Now it's sort of like watching paint dry, only it's a whole lot faster and a whole lot cooler. You can see it's going to develop some little bubbles. And you can see that edge is starting to look like a fried egg. It's starting to really gel up there. And in just a couple of seconds, this thing ought to be um, pretty close to dry. And then I'm going to start to trim it off. So I'm going to grab one of my crank neck chisels here real quick and get ready to peel that off just as soon as it's um, solidified enough. All right, that's looking pretty good. I mean, you can see over here, it's still a little bit, not quite as bright yellow as it is over on that other corner but it's if you do this quickly enough you can see i can just strip that stuff right off of there it's still sort of rubbery if i wait a little longer the problem it'll get so hard that it's going to be difficult to shave off so i'm going to shave that down a little bit we'll take all that extra put it right back in the pan Melt it back down again. Sweet. And the great thing about this is if you w work along on this and you end up pulling some of the inlay out of the channel, you're remelting it, just re-pour it. I need Grab a good sharp card scraper, and we're just going to, there we go, scrape that stuff right down. that I'm not going to keep because it's got wood shavings in it but you can see it really just uh, solidified up there and the longer that sits and dries the brighter yellow it's going to get now you have a lot of those air bubbles in there if that bugs you pour some more on okay well isn't that about the coolest inlay technique you've ever seen really that pretty much is all there is to it so um, I brought in another, this is an example. This is half of a design off of the earliest known um, sulfur inlaid piece. It was a, a blanket chest from Lancaster County. 